someone swear from that your testimony in these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Could you state your name, please? Olivia Bertolin. Okay. And Bertolin, if you would spell that last name. B E R T A L A N. And um, at one point, back in February of actually two th- early 2012, did you live in the retreat at Twin Lakes area? Yes. Have you since moved out? Yes, I have. Okay. Are you married? Yes, I am. Do you have any children? Two. Okay. And their ages? Two and a half and four months. Okay. Um, going back then to um, when you still lived at Retreat View Circle, did an event happen at your residence uh, where a crime was committed? Yes. If you would explain to the jury what happened with that. Um, I was home on a Wednesday with my son. He was, I think, nine months at the time. And... Um, I heard someone ring my doorbell repeatedly, so I went to check upstairs because I didn't have a peephole, and I saw two young African-American guys um, ring my doorbell repeatedly, and they kept on looking up at the window, and I called my mom because I didn't know what to do, and they left. Then after a while, I went back upstairs to check one more time, and they were walking in front of my house. One came towards my house, and um, I... Called my, I was on the phone with my mom at the time, and I started crying, and I called the police. They broke into my house. I heard some bangs downstairs. Um, the dispatcher told me to grab any weapon I had because I had my son in my arms. He had woken up and um, just prepared to use it if I had to. The, the guy was ring, um, I was locked in my son's bedroom, and he was shaking the doorknob trying to get in. And I was sitting there with a pair of rusty scissors and my son in one arm, and... Um, they, the police came and they ended up leaving. And um, do you recall approximately when this happened? August 3rd of 2011. And did you then take a place of refuge or hiding while this was occurring? Sir, yes, I did. And where did you go to hide? Um, my son's upstairs bedroom. In the closet? Um, I wasn't in the closet. I was in the far corner because the closet was closer to the door. Um, so she said to get away as far away from the door as possible. And did you have your son with you during that time? Yes, I did. did when um, did the, the people who were downstairs at some point did they leave the house? Um, yeah, once did I they, guess they escaped before the cops got there. And did they take any items with them? Yes, they did. What did they take? Um, my camera, our laptop. They tried to get our TV. It was unhooked, but he had it hooked up to our computer, so they couldn't get it off. Um, I think there was something else, but I can't remember what it was, but definitely our camera and my laptop. And um, at some point, then one of those people, or at least one of those people, were um, arrested and found and arrested and charged with that crime? Yes. And um, do you know what happened? Do you know the person's name? Um, his name is Emmanuel Burgess. And um, is that... The reason why you moved from that area? Yes. Nothing further. Thank you. Just bring it back. Ms. Berlin, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, you had some contact uh, with George Zimmerman after that event, did you not? I did. Okay, and. Jack, uh, um, Outside the scope of direct. Judge, it's, it's um, the basis of her testimony, I believe. I would have to definitely proffer it at the bench. Well, we can't proffer it at the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please put your notepads face down on the chair and call the deputy judge out of the courtroom.
please be seated. You may do your proffer. Ms. Berlin, I believe you said that this crime happened to you on August 3rd, 2011. Yes, sir. Did you have contact with George Zimmerman that day? I did. Okay, when I say George Zimmerman, I'm referring to the gentleman seated at the end of the table to my left. Correct? Yes, sir. All right. He came to your house? Yes. And he gave you his phone number? Yes. And the reason he came to your house, as he described to you, was that he had heard you had been a victim, right? Yes, sir. And you talked to him about it, correct? Yes, sir. You described the people that you saw at your residence? I believe so. You described them as two people as opposed to one? Yes. As males? Yes. As black? African American, yes. As teenagers? Yes. I said they looked young. And that wasn't the only conversation you had with this defendant about that case and you becoming a victim, right? Right. Is it correct to say that you and he talked about this approximately 20 times after that? Probably around there. I'm sorry? Probably around that amount. And you discussed with him the fact that the person had not yet been caught? I'm sure I did. I spoke to several people about it. And the person wasn't caught until after you moved out of the retreat Twin Lakes, right? He was arrested in December. Then he was released because he was a minor. And he was arrested again after we moved out. After you moved out? I believe so. We got a letter after we moved out. I'm not sure the exact date of his arrest. And another thing that you and George Zimmerman discussed was where you believed or he believed that particular suspect lived, right? I'm sure we discussed that. And you discussed that he lived near the back entrance of the retreat Twin Lakes? Yes. Your Honor, I have other questions for her, but they don't relate to her contact with the defendant. Okay. So that would be the extent of the proffer, I believe, is what was objected to. I'll withdraw my objection. Okay, thank you. Let's go ahead and bring the jury back. Please be seated. You may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Berlin, I believe you said this incident happened to you on August 3rd, 2011. Yes, sir. 
Okay. That day, did you get a visit from a man named George Zimmerman? I did. All right. And he's, is he the gentleman seated to my left at the end of the table? Yes. He used to live in your neighborhood, right? He used to live in your neighborhood. Oh, sorry. Yes. And he actually came to your house that day. Correct? Correct. I need you to just speak out loud. And he talked to you. The reason he came to your house, he didn't know you, right? Right. He He came to you because you had been a victim of something, right? Yes. And you described for him what had happened to you um, that afternoon. Yes. And you described to him the people that had victimized you, right? Yes. And you described the number of people? Um, Yeah. How many did you tell him? Two. And did you describe the sex of the people? Yes. And what was that? Male. Did you describe the race of the people? Yes. What was that? African American. Did you describe the age of the people? I didn't know the age for sure, but I'm sure I told him I assumed they were late teens. They looked that age. And um, after that, you and he continued to talk about that very case, right? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay, approximately 20 times. Is that fair? Yeah. And you and he discussed that the person or persons involved had not been caught, right? Right. And you discussed that it was your belief, and I say your collectively, you and him, that that person responsible or one of the people actually lived in the retreat at Twin Lakes, right? Um, It was confirmed by the police. That they lived inside. Yes. And you discussed that with the defendant. Uh, And other neighbors. And you discussed that that person lived in Retreat of Twin Lakes near the back gate, right? Yes. And then it's your understanding that at some point um, that person was arrested? Yes. And released uh, prior to February of 2012. Correct. You, um, have you watched the proceedings in this trial? Briefly. What, what parts did you watch? Um, I believe I saw um, his uncle testify. Who else? Um, I don't know any by names. I haven't watched very much. Have you tweeted about this case? I, not since. No, I have not. Not since, since what? Since maybe last year when it first happened. You haven't tweeted about this trial? I don't believe so. This week? I don't believe so. You, um, you do have a Twitter account, correct? Yes. And you follow, um, you actually follow Mr. O'Mara, do you not? Yes. And you follow uh, a, uh, an account or a site called Zimmerman Legal Case, right? I do. And you have um, been on Nancy Grace? Yes. In regards to this case? Um, I, over a year ago, yes. I have just a moment, Your Honor. Ms. Berlin, thank you for your time. Redirect. Thank you. Just a few follow-up questions, ma'am. Mm-hmm. When uh, Mr. Zimmerman came to you to talk to you about having been victimized by a home invasion, did you consider that strange? No. Were you appreciative of his efforts to help you out? Very. Tell, tell me about that. Um, we were terrified when this happened, and when we came home after we were having car troubles, and we came home, and he was just saying that he wanted to make sure we were okay. We weren't home. My sister was, um, and she didn't answer the door because she was scared because of what had gone on. Um, so I was just appreciative that he was offering his hand and had told me I could spend time with his wife if I needed to go somewhere during the day because I was so afraid. He told you that his wife, Shelley, was a nursing student, correct? Correct. No objection has to hear, sir. Did he tell you, what did he tell you about his availability, if any, of his wife to be there for you if need be? The object to that is to hear saying relevance. It's... Well, I, I'm not really having a problem with the relevance. I was just following up. Okay, Your Honor, I'll just focus it again. Um, 
were you aware that Ms. Zimmerman was there for you as well, if need be? Yes, sir. Did you then at some point shortly thereafter go to the Homeowners Association and discuss the issue of the home invasion? I don't believe I went. My husband did. Okay. And then uh, in, in addition to your conversation with George Zimmerman, did you talk to other people about um, what happened to you? Yes. Who is that? Um, a couple of my neighbors, a neighbor named Pete, another neighbor, Chris. Was this um, home invasion then something of a point of conversation because of the, the trauma you had with it? Yes. Matter of fact, did Mr. Zimmerman, after the Homeless Association that started Neighborhood Watch, did he bring to you a, a lock to help you with the sliding glass door? Yes, he did. Did you consider that weird or unusual or strange? No, I was very appreciative. Were you made aware that there was a issue with problems with the sliding glass doors in your neighborhood? I don't believe so. Was it actually how they got in the house, the sliding glass door? Or no? Yes. So they actually came in through the back sliding glass door? Mm -hmm. Did yeah. this lock then help secure that problem? Yes, it sits behind it, and it locks it tight so they can't pull it open. And before um, you moved out, you even had, what, didn't you get a dog to help? Yes, we did. Was that part of trying to just stay more secure in a neighborhood where you've been burglarized or invaded? Yes, the cops told us to get a dog. You know the person who arrested, who, who was arrested, was Emmanuel Burgess. You said yes, and that he was released. Yes. Did you know that he was rearrested on February sixth, two thousand twelve? I didn't know when. I got a letter after we moved out, um, so I, I didn't know exactly when he was arrested. Did any of your interactions with Mr. Zimmerman in this regard leave you with some impression that he was just just too involved in trying to help you out? No. Did you think that his behavior was helpful to you? Very. Still have the dog? Yes. Thanks very much. Nothing further. Thank you. May Ms. Bertelman be excused? She may. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You're excused. Please call your next witness. Uh,